Hello. So in the previous video, we took a look at the qualitative behavior of the iStable multivibrator. And uh, we came up with the waveforms for the output signal, V out, and then V plus and V minus, the positive and negative input signals. And we saw that through the charging and discharging of the capacitor, um, the output signal was made to be switched uh, between the positive or the high voltage and the low voltage, positive and negative saturation voltages in this case. The uh, transition voltage uh, was equal to V1 and uh, the positive input terminal uh, was sw switching between plus V1 and minus V1, where V1 was just the result of voltage division from V out. And so V1, if we recall, was equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V out. Uh, now we're interested in calculating what is the period of oscillation for our output signal. And in order to do that, we are going to uh, redraw the circuit or create a little uh, model for our circuit where we basically have the output voltage uh, that is the one that is going to cause the capacitor to charge or discharge. And so we can assume that capacitor C is being charged and discharged via resistor R through uh, the output voltage, which we're going to represent as a uh, voltage source. So that is V out. And uh, initially V out is going to be sitting at the saturation voltage, as we said. So I'm going to perhaps just say V out equals V sat. This is the voltage across the capacitor. And we're only going to calculate how long it takes for the capacitor to charge from uh, minus V1, that point over there, to plus V1. And that's going to give us uh, half of the period of the signal, and then multiplying that times 2 will give us the full period. We're going to assume uh, symmetrical charging and discharging periods for the capacitor. So let's assume that the capacitor is initially charged to negative V1. So we're starting, this is our point uh, T0, this is our point T1. So capacitor starts with an initial value of uh, negative V1 over there. Perhaps I'll draw it in a different color. All right, and we know that if we have a capacitor that is initially charged to a certain value, um, and it's going through a charging cycle, we can uh, come up with an expression for the final voltage across the capacitor, which incidentally is equal to V minus, so Vc as a function of time, which is equal to V minus as a function of time, is going to be equal to its steady state value, so V of infinity, um, V minus, we will call it of infinity, plus V minus a time zero plus minus V minus of infinity times e to the negative t divided by tau, where tau is, in this case, uh, is equal to Rc. So, is the time constant of the circuit. In this case, it's just simply an Rc circuit, so R times C. Uh, I can start substituting values of things that I know. I know that my final value that my capacitor is trending towards is V sat, is the value of V out. And so I can substitute this as V minus of C being equal to uh, V sat plus my initial value is negative V1 minus V sat times e to the negative t. And for now, I'm going to leave tau just expressed as tau. We're going to do the substitution for RC a little bit later. Um, so I can still rewrite this in a slightly simpler form as V sat minus V1 plus V sat e to the negative t divided by tau. And uh, we know that uh, the value of that negative input voltage is going to be equal to 
uh, v1 at time equals t1. Okay, and so if I substitute my t in that equation for t1, then I can substitute the value of v minus for uh, v1. So v1 is going to be equal to uh, v sat minus v1 plus v sat e to the negative t1 divided by tau. Where again, I have labeled t1 in my plot above. It's the point where my v minus signal reaches a value of v1. Uh, so now I can start solving for t1, because t1 is going to be uh, half of my period. So if I solve for t1, I can multiply that expression times 2, and it will give me the value of my period. Uh, so let's start that process. This is going to be e to the negative t1 over tau is going to be equal to, um, let's see, if I multiply both sides times minus 1, I'll be minus v1 minus v sat, so v sat minus v1. divided by v sat plus v1. And now I have uh, e to the minus some expression. I can use the fact that e to the minus, um, uh, or rather more generally, a to the minus x. So a to the minus x is equal to 1 divided by a to the x. So based on that, I can say uh, this expression, v sub minus v1 divided by v sub plus v1, is equal to 1 divided by e to the t1 over tau, and therefore e to the t1 over tau is equal to the inverse of this expression, or v sub plus v1 divided by v sub minus v1. And now I'm ready to solve for t1 over tau by taking natural log on, on both sides of the equation. That will be natural log of v sat minus v1 divided by, or excuse me, plus v1 divided by saturation voltage v sat minus v1. And finally, my t1 will be equal to tau times the natural log of that expression, and my period t is going to be equal to 2 times t1, which is going to be 2 times tau times the natural log of v sat plus v1 divided by v sat minus v1. But now notice that uh, v1, we just said, is equal to r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times the saturation voltage v sat, uh, since that's the value of v out at this point. So I can rewrite my period as 2 times tau times the natural log of v sat plus r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times v sat, all that divided by v sat minus r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times v sat. And if I factor out uh, my v sats, I will end up with uh, t period t being equals to 2 times tau times the natural log of um, r1 plus r2 plus r2, so r1 plus 2 r2 divided by r1 minus r2, or plus r2 minus r2, so divided by r1, or what's equivalent. 2 times tau times the natural log of 1 plus 2 r2 over r1, uh, where tau is equal to r times c. So I could write this as 2 rc times the natural log of 1 plus 2 r2 divided by r1. And so we could select appropriate values of resistors and capacitor in order to come up with uh, the right the right period, which also implies the right frequency for our output signal. 
Now, I do want to mention uh, a few design considerations for the circuit. And the first one is going to be that uh, typical values that are chosen for these resistors is that R2 is equal to uh, 0.86 R1. And the reason why that is chosen that way is so that in that particular case, notice that uh, my period is simply equal to 2 times tau or 2 times RC. And so it simplifies our selection of value process. Uh, also notice that the voltage across my capacitor is going to be switching between negative V1 and positive V1. And so it's going to go from a negative voltage to a positive voltage. Uh, and so we need to make sure that, um, that we are choosing for our capacitor a capacitor that is not polarized. So C must be non-polarized since uh, Vc, which is equal to V minus, um, goes between negative V1 and positive V1. So I'm just going to say negative V1 is less than Vc is less than positive V1. That's less than or equal to. Uh, and then the final thing to consider is that the uh, differential input voltage on the op amp, V plus minus V minus, if we look at the at the graphs for a moment, we can see that uh, at the most extreme points, we will have the delta between those two waveforms being equal to 2 times V1. And so we just need to make sure that we select an op amp and appropriate uh, values all around so that the, uh, the value of 2 times V1 does not exceed the maximum differential input range for the op amp. So, uh, uh, V plus minus V minus is less than or equal to, to V1. Uh, and this must be uh, op amp with adequate differential input range. And that's it. That's how we will go about designing a, uh, a an a stable multi vibrator to have a, to generate a square wave signal with a particular frequency or period. Thank you.